Hello guys, um, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number 7 on objects or classes. Um, okay, we're gonna start with a very simple code, uh, what we have seen already in past tutorials. Um, we have uh, opening a window of 600 by 600 pixels, uh, smoothing on, and background painted black, right? Um, so what we're gonna see today is the idea of an object, that it's essential for object-oriented programming. Basically the whole idea of the, this programming language is oriented towards building objects. So this is a key tutorial. For that I have prepared this small piece of information. The idea of an object that is the same as a class, right? Um, we can think about, for instance, the example of a snowflake. Um, it's an archetype. It, it's a way of constructing something. Uh, it doesn't specify each specific snowflake. It specifies the way of building a snowflake. That's a class. So, the idea of specific snowflakes in this case, we will call the class instance. When we activate that class in order to build an instance. So, we will see what part of the code defines how to build a class. First of all, the constructor of the class, basically. And then, how to call these objects into the screen and then start, start using them. So those will be the class instances. Okay, so let's get started with that. Um, so I'm gonna click in this arrow here um, where it allows us to open a new tab. Um, so we can, when we press that, we, we, we get to add the name of the new tab. In this case, I will type ball, right? So we have a new tab. Um, you might be wondering how does processing kind of work with this kind of multiple files, right? This extra file is just extra space. It's another page of the script. Uh, processing reads down and it continues here. So anything that we type here could be typed just below here and we can keep going in just one page or start opening different pages. It's up to us. But there's no file linking uh, or, or problems with that. So here we're, I'm going to use this tab to specify my uh, class that we'll, we call ball, right? So we'll start by typing class, ball, the name of the class. And we'll open curly brackets and then leave quite a bit of space for actually writing our class and close curly brackets. I, of, I always really, when I open curly brackets, I try to close them right away. Um, to not forget um, to close them because most of the syntax mistakes come from uh, not dealing properly with curly brackets. So I'm going to write some comments uh, about what, are this, what is the structure of a class. Um, first of all, uh, so comments is double slash, right? So first of all, we have global variables. This is a place where we will just specify the main variables of the class, let's say the location, the speed, or, or whatever we think it's necessary for this class to, to work. Then we have a place uh, that we call the constructor. This is basically the most important part of the class. This is where we specify how do you build the class. What piece of information do you need to provide for this class to work, right? Um, it also it's where you initialize variables. This is this is the place where you call variables for the first time, or you um, give a value for certain variable that will happen just once at the beginning of the class, and won't happen over and over through the loop, right? Um, and then we have a third part of the class that we will that is the functions, right? So we can add uh, a lot of functionality. Um, and we will see the idea of modularity, like how to break down complex behavior into different modules and being able to call those separately. Uh, so we can really see um, where is our code working and where it's actually having some problems, right? So let's write an example for each one of these. We're going to say float x and float y. Right? We can just declare the variables like this, or we can also add um, a value to them uh, at this point. Um, it's not important. It's just defining that these variables are uh, global variables for this class. Um, we're going to jump into the constructor. 
the constructor is written like this. Uh, we say ball, the name of our class. Uh, we open parentheses. We have a parentheses here that it, where we can actually uh, specify information required for this class to operate. Um, right now I'm going to leave it uh, empty, but uh, we will keep moving forward and eventually start adding some information there. So just for the sake of the structure of the class, we're going to leave it empty for now. So we're going to open curly brackets and close curly brackets. The space between these curly brackets is the space where we can specify any number, uh, like as much a script as we want, but this will operate just once when the class is called, at the beginning of the class. And then it won't uh, happen anymore. So similar to the idea of the setup and the draw as a place where we start variables or we do code with just once and then um, it doesn't loop anymore, here the class has the same structure. The constructor is that, that place to just do things just once. Um, and then we have functions, right? So we're going to do a function, something like void display, right? Where we're going to um, just say something like ellipse 200, 200, 120, 120, right? Um, perfect. So this uh, class is, at this point, it uh, should be working. Uh, it's not too clever class at all, uh, but we're going to start from here, right? So the structure, it's, uh, it's specified. Let's see if it works. Perfect. The script is running, but you see that there's nothing on the screen, right? This is the same what we were talking before. We have specified a way of building this object ball, but we haven't called it into the screen. We haven't built an instance of the class, right? So we're going to build an instance of the class. Um, when you write a class, the name of the class becomes a variable type. What does it mean? That we can say ball as as we say integer or float, and this will be the kind of variable that we will specify. And now we will call um, the name of um, our instance. This is the place where we will say the name of the instance of our class. So I'm going to call it my ball, right? <clears throat> so again, this is the class or the variable type that is the class. And then we have the class instance. Um, so first of all, we're declaring it. Now we need to initialize it. So we're going to say my ball equals new ball. Right? So the keyword new is specifying build a new uh, instance of the class ball. And here we are opening and closing parentheses. This is the place where we would have to specify the information required by the class to work. But in this case, because we have specified the constructor as an empty constructor, basically with um, with a parenthesis that it's empty, we don't have to specify anything, right? So this instance now exists in the system. Um, still, it won't show in the screen, but uh, we can actually access its functionality now. How do we do that? We will specify my ball dot this play. Right? So this is a function of the class. Uh, by typing this dot here, this dot opens up the class and any functionality that this class has um, implemented, like in this case the only thing that we have is display, uh, we can call that function. So let's see if this works. <coughs> oh, cool. We have the ellipse in the position 200, 200, and size 20 and 20. Um, so this might seem rather a long way of doing exactly the same of what we had done before. Um, so let's do it a little bit more interesting, right? Uh, so again, we have three steps um, to actually call the instance. Uh, so I'm going to type these steps. Um, First, declare. Second, initialize. And then, call functionality. Uh, 
um, realize that we're calling the display function in the draw loop. That means that it, we're calling it every frame. We could call it also in the setup, but it will just happen just once. So, I mean, the ball will appear the first frame and eventually disappear, right? Um, so, it's up to us, the functionality, we want to call it just one time or we want to call it every frame. Uh, in this case, I'm going to work most of the time in the draw because I want this uh, class to constantly be working and, and displaying itself in the screen and do some other things. Um, so let's let's talk a, a little bit about, again about this idea of the constructor and uh, what can we specify in here, right? So we can specify something like um, float uh, x or I'm going to type underscore x and float underscore y, right? So if I specify, I mean, I could put any name here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use underscore because it's some sort of convention as well. I will explain it in a second. But now I need to specify, if I try to run this class, it will tell me, hey, you need to specify two pieces of information, two floats for this function, to, for this class to work. So we're going to specify something like um, 200, comma 200, right? So now, again, this class is working. This place, 200 and 200, is a place that this, um, basically, the piece of information that we are required for making this class start. What if we want to link this information that we are providing here, this 200 and this 200, um, to the place where the ellipse is going to be drawn? Right, so we need to do something. We need to somehow link this information here. Um, the problem is that this information it's only um, visible within these curly brackets here, right? So we need to. Uh, there's a technique that um, most people work with is that when we specify these global variables at the beginning, these variables are visible. Um, all over the class. We can access them from any functions, from anywhere, basically. So we're going to say something like this. x equals underscore x. In this way, we are first specifying or declaring a, glo a global variable x, and then whatever information we are sending in here from the constructor, we can use it anywhere in the class. But start with the variable provided uh, somewhere outside the class. So we're going to do this underscore y and then we can actually use here x and y because these are global variables. We can't really use underscore x and underscore y again because we can't see those variables outside these curly brackets. Right? So this is a way of getting out of that problem. Um, so we're going to specify something a little bit different, like 400 and 400 instead, just to see that this is working. And the position of the ball will be defined as <coughs> from the outside of the class. So well, That's working, perfect. Um, so the next idea is how to start building some more interesting functionality because right now we're just drawing again as uh, an ellipse on the screen and this is not uh, something that we need a class to actually do we need uh, if we do we're going to do a class we, we could just go for something a little bit more interesting and with this i'm going to touch the idea of modularity that it's a very good practice for writing code especially if you're starting um so i'm going to do a function called run and I like doing this function because this function for me it's the place where I will uh, break down all the behavior that I want my class to have. Let's say I want to, I'm going to do some comments here. I will say I want my class to display on the screen, so appear in the screen, right? And I'm going to say also I want this class to move. Then I could say, hey, I want this class to bounce. And then finally, maybe I want to say, also, I want this class to get affected by gravity, right? 
So wow, well, that's uh, a lot of um, functionality that we want to build into this uh, object. But we already know that this class, uh, this function display, it's already written. So we can say that display is our first function that it's already done, right? So this is the one that makes the ball appear in the screen, and we can specify also the color the way it, it appears in the screen. This is going to control that. Um, so that's fine. Uh, if we use this function run now, we will have to change this display to run. So we will call just one function from our ball, but that function will contain all the other functions that we will be building. Right? I'm going to increase a little bit the size of the window here. So let's see if this is working. This is perfect, right? So again, we are using the function run instead of display here to call this function that will contain all the other functionality of our class. Let's try to build the function move that we have seen a little bit before and we will do. So I'm calling the function move that doesn't exist yet, so I will write that. Void move. Uh, I'm gonna say something like um, x, that is the position, right, equals x plus 2, right, uh, and let's see what happens with that. I mean, we are calling here in the function run again, we are calling our function move, so that's activated, and let's see what we get out of that. So, the ball is moving. Um, I'm gonna make this object starting 200 and 200 again just to have a little bit more of space to see how the ball is moving. Perfect. So this tool is basically if we think about this what it's saying just update your position as X means the position of the ellipse. Uh, update your position adding two each frame, right? Another way of writing this would be x plus equals 2, right? But if we think about this 2, this 2 is not just a number 2 that we're interested in. We could call a variable load speed equals 2 and call this the speed, right? Because if we change this value to more or less, um, we make this ball to move differently. If we make it negative, it will move in the deep, in the opposite direction. Let's try that. Minus two speed, so we should get the ball moving in the left direction. Can we do that in the y? Can we say something like y plus equals speed? Um, and in this case, I'm going to use just two. <coughs> So we're getting that the ball moves two units in x and two move units in y each frame. Perfect. But what if I want to specify that the ball moves differently in x and in y? Um, the most easy way to do that is actually specifying two speeds. I'm going to copy paste this line. I'm going to specify speed x and speed y. And so I'm going to use here x plus equals speed x and y plus equals speed y. So we can specify that the movement in y is 0 0.5 and the movement in x is 2 and we get not a 45 degree movement but we get uh, something in between, right? Um, so in this way, we have defined a function move that allows us to make to, to make this ball move uh, depending on its speed. So this is uh, this is interesting, um, and we can change this variable speed, and we can specify the speed of our ball. That's great. Let's think about the next step right now. And the next step would be doing this bounce. This ball, when it just reaches the border of the screen, it gets out of the screen. Uh, we want to maintain it inside the, the screen, so we're going to include again the function bounce, right? 
but because this function is not written, we have to write it, right? So void bounds, open parentheses, close parentheses, and curly brackets. Um, so what do we have to do here? We have to specify that if we reach the border of the screen, bounds. How do we make the ball bounds? We can specify um, that the speed gets inverted. So let's try to write that line. We can use an if statement saying if uh, x is bigger than width. Width turns blue because it's a keyword by processing to recognize automatically how big is the window that we're using in the x direction. right? So the width in this case is 600 pixels. We also have the keyword height to specify how tall the window is in the y direction. So we're going to say if x is bigger than the width, right? And we're going to say something like speed x equals speed x times minus 1. What does this mean? This means that if we multiply anything by minus 1, we will just invert from positive to negative. And we realized that when it was positive, it was moving to the right direction, and it was negative, it was moving to the left direction. So if we use this if statement, we can actually get the effect of bouncing while reaching this side of the screen. Great. The problem is that when we reach this side of the screen, we don't have that. This is zero. Uh, in terms of the size of the window. This is the width, so 600. This is again 600, and this is 0 in the y direction. It's important to know that the 0, 0 coordinate of processing is in this point, upper left corner. So if we would like to this to happen for all the four edges of the screen, we would have to specify this if statement four times. So I'm going to copy it and say if speed is, in this case, smaller and zero, um, speed x gets multiplied by um, minus one. Then I'm going to say if y is bigger than the height, speed y gets multiplied by minus one. And the final one, it's a similar version of this one, uh, where we say if y is smaller than 0, so if y um, reaches the boundary, speed y gets multiplied again by minus 1. And so let's see if these four if statements, one for each or one of the edges of the screen, allows as to have an anim a constant animation of our ball bouncing around. So, good, we have one bounce in the left. Uh, great, we have a bounce in the right, I mean in the left as well. Um, down as well, and because the ball is moving quite slow, we will have to wait quite a bit, but it should be working on the upper part as well. Uh, so we have the bounce implemented. That's great. So. We have uh, quite simple functions, one called bounce, one move, and one display, and we're getting something interesting already, some ball that is bouncing around the screen. Um, so we will specify a little bit of a higher value of speed. Maybe we can make this ball move a little bit faster. Right. Um, and now we have the idea of gravity. This sounds like almost like including physics into the system, um, but we're going to see how to make it really easily. Um, so the function gravity we have to specify as well, void gravity. So if we think of what gravity is, gravity is just a force um, pointing downwards, basically it's a vector going down, and that it constantly affects everything, right? So we need to say that <coughs> speed in x, in y, that is the y direction, right? So we're going to work in the direction of y, um, 
plus equals gravity. What would gravity be in this case? Let's say something 0 0.2. Let's try something like that. Wow. What we're doing here is just like every frame we are adding a vector going down, going down, going down. When it reaches the lower point, it bounces back. But we keep decreasing that uh, movement with this gravity. So you can see that our gravity is not too strong, but it makes at least this curvy movement. And we start deaccelerating the ball. And we have some problem here at some point that I'm not going to solve, but uh, we will see that later. Um, so I guess that the most important thing here is that through this idea of modularity that several discrete functions can build up a very complex or quite interesting behavior, right? So we have display, move, very simple function, adding, updating the position. We have a bounce that is just an if statement defining the boundaries and also gravity that is a very very simple function only adding uh, certain values. The good thing about this uh, class that we have written and that I will post in a, online as well is that we can now specify as many as we want, right? So we can say, let's say ball my ball two my ball three right so we're going to specify different different instances of this class and I'm going to say just by copy pasting two and three and I'm going to specify here a hundred and a hundred or a hundred and four hundred and in here I'm going to specify four hundred and two hundred right so I have three balls and I need to, again, the three steps, declaring, initializing and calling the functionality. I'm going to say my ball 2 and my ball 3. And then this is the places where they start, so each three of them will start in different places. Um, but all of them will have their own independent functionality. Their own gravity, their own bouncing. Um, we will see uh, in the next tutorials um, how to use arrays and collections to basically not has, have to specify this each time, but eventually we'll, we can have hundreds of balls just uh, bouncing in the screen and calling them through for loops. Um, but for now, this is the video on classes.